Uh, let's get into some of these burning off season questions. I have 10 of them. We're going to do four minutes on each of these questions. We're bringing out the buzzer, T.O. I know how much you love that timer, that, how much you love that alarm. It's going to be four minutes per question. We're going to open uh, six minutes on this first question because I think this is the biggest one that we have to talk about. All right, so we're going to you first, uh, T.O., on this one. Gonzaga or North Carolina, who is the best team in the country? Go. If I had to pick one, I would go between the two. I'd probably go. You, you have to pick one. That's the question. Well, well the, whole but, question but the rest is of the question is, is or someone else. I read the notes or someone okay. Okay. else. And just to be a devil's advocate, I, I would go Gonzaga if I had to pick between the two. But there's two teams right now without guys. I've, I haven't done the deepest of dives. I, I'm going to obviously do that. I have my windows open because there's no AC here and it's 80 degrees outside. So if you hear a car go by, that's what's happening. But two more teams that I really have my eye on. One uh, is way out west, and we understand the historical significance of them. But UCLA is going to be pretty good. They're going to be pretty good. They lose Johnny Juzang, but they get Amari Bailey, who's going to ha- give them another shot creator for others with the ball beside Tiger Campbell. They get Adam Bona, another guy who is physically ready to contribute right away. Both of those guys are top 20 guys. I love UCLA moving forward without – Johnny Juzang, because I think sometimes they hold the ball too much. Amari Bailey gets that ball moving a little bit more. Tiger Campbell, much of the same way. And then another one, guys, Houston. I'm never going to doubt. I'm not, is it time for Houston to take that next step? Uh, Marcus Sasser returns. They get a young man named Jairus Wall, uh, was it Jairus uh, Walker, top 10 player in the country. And then Terrence Archino, who was a top 70 player in the country, probably underrated. Houston's going to be really a good, good again. If I had to pick between the two, I'm going Gonzaga, then UCLA and Houston as well. Carolina's good, but I think people forget how good Brady Manick was for that team. Fanta? I'm going to go with Carolina here over Gonzaga and the addition of Pete Nance puts Carolina over the top as my number one team in the country. Look, they lose Brady Manick, and there's no question he filled out a unique role. There was only one player like Manick in college basketball last season. Uh, It was him. He was very unique. But you bring back your starting backcourt. That's where I'm concerned with Gonzaga, guys. Nolan Hickman, Rasir Bolden, Julian Strother. I get that they're all quality pieces, but I still give Carolina's backcourt the edge with R.J. Davis, with Caleb Love, and then with Leaky Black. And I think that the returning experience there and the fact that those dudes perform like dudes in March Madness, they just stepped up to the occasion time and again in different ways. I'm going to side with that backcourt. And, oh, by the way, the return of Armando Baycott, for this team is able to negate, if I'm comparing Gonzaga and North Carolina, the return of a Drew Timmy. And Timmy's return is huge. And I'm not questioning Drew Timmy here. I look at Gonzaga, though, and in the past couple of seasons, what's made them so successful is I have loved their backcourt. And I thought that that gives them a different dimension. I give North Carolina's backcourt an, a bit of an edge here. And I think the addition of Pete Nance cannot be overstated. The fact is that that guy performed at a pretty high level, flew under the radar at Northwestern, a program that that didn't perform, but he was able to put up some efficient numbers in the Big Ten. That's going to translate over at North Carolina. And oh, by the way, now Pete Nance is playing with better players at Carolina. And I think that helps him too because everybody, Pete Nance was at the top of everybody's scouting report at Northwestern. I give the edge to the Tar Heels over the Zacks. Yeah, I, I lean towards North Carolina as well. And as much as uh, as I like to disagree with uh, one Gregory Waddell, who does all of our social media stuff, who is not very good at putting together lists, uh, I do think that Pete Nance is just such an important addition because I think he can fill a void that, that Brady Manick left. And, and T.O., you're 100% right about Manick. The, the dude is – he brought a level of toughness his ability to space the floor, the gravity that he had is, is something that um, I don't think can be replaced. Uh, I think Pete Nance is the perfect foreman to a slot in there. He shot 46% from three last year. He was super efficient playing on a really, really bad Northwestern team. I do think he's best as a complimentary piece. He is a good passer. Uh, he had a really good block rate. He had a really good defensive rebounding rate. Um, he's going to create space for those guards to be able to do things. I think he is the, the addition that you needed for that team. Now, uh, my concerns are the same with Gonzaga uh, that they are. Uh, Fanta, I I agree with you. There's a lot of young guards on Mm -hmm. that roster. And we've kind of like, 
we've seen what Gonzaga is with Drew Timmy, right? We know what they are. They are very, very good. Are they good enough to be able to go out and beat the best team in the country that's going to have guys that can exploit what some of Timmy's weaknesses are? Um, I think that they probably can. Uh, I'd be more willing to bet on the team where I love the two studs in the backcourt that have been there, a stud in Leaky Black that knows his role, a stud in Pete Nance that knows his role, and Armando Baycott just hoovering up every single rebound that's possible. And for the record, like, I'm never going to doubt Mondo ever again. Like, he's such the, – the pain. We saw this, guys. We saw this at the yeah. Final Four. The pain that he played through in the national title game, like, he he could not move getting on that court. And he went out, and he he was really, really good for about 25 minutes before it looked like it just kind of – that ankle tightened up on him. So I'm never going to doubt him again. I will say this. Uh, I agree 100% with you on Houston and UCLA, T.O. That, that would be – those are my top four. Right there, my preseason mm-hmm. top four. I just think I would have North Carolina a little bit above Gonzaga and Gonzaga a little bit above those next two. I just trust them a little bit more. I think there's more overall talent, if that makes sense. Keep in mind, Nolan Hickman and uh, Hunter Salas both coming back, and then they added some playmaking with Malachi Smith. Uh, like Gonzaga loaded up too, and they had two five stars that played mm-hmm. uh, less than most five stars would play on any other team in their back. I need to season. see it though. Like, I need to see it from them before I fully buy in. Is that, you know, like, yeah, no, it makes sense, but they didn't have the opportunity to show it either. True, true. Very fair. I I am very interested. Like, there, Gonzaga could run out of lineup where they basically have uh, Nolan Hickman, Hunter Salas, um, Rasir Bolton, who's coming back, Mm -hmm. and Julian Strother as their one, two, three, four all around Drew Timmy. Like, how do you guard that? Very versatile, very versatile. (laughs) Another name is Efton Reed. For Gonzaga, mm-hmm. what, what's he going to do with more of an opportunity? But this is Salas's time to step up and, and give them what they recruited him on. And I'm with you. I mean, I, look, that is when I think Gonzaga, they've got an interesting four out one in that they can that they can go with. So there's a lot of intrigue there. And there's also intrigue to when you do have pieces that haven't yet been able to show it. What exactly does it come out to? Whereas with North Carolina, we do know a lot about that team. We know a lot about what they bring to the table. Do, do you guys, briefly, T.O., do you trust Carolina's bench a lot? That's the question. That's I the don't question. know. Be- hey, first of all, <laughs> be- better alarm, I think. I think. Not much better. I, I don't have a good alarm on this. I, I don't know I don't know what it is. I, I judge myself for what these alarms are, but go ahead. T.O., answer Fanta's question before we get into question number two. That, that's the thing that that's the thing that most people are going to worry about. You, you obviously uh, get Nance, but behind it, Puff Johnson, is he uh, a, a North Carolina level player? I would say no. But uh, you know, Hubert, whenever they got a lot better, he shortened his bench. That was uh, the big thing. Uh, he shortened his bench. He quit playing everybody. He played six players. Now, is he going to do that all season next year? Because then there's a cumulative effect that starts in November, and then by the time you get to March, dude's legs start leaving. And it can become kind of an issue moving forward. But it'll be interesting to see. The bench for Carolina is going to be huge. One thing Gonzaga does have is a bench. So uh, the longevity and the lack of scheduling with playing in that conference, I don't want to hear it. It's not as good as the ACC. But uh, the longevity and the depth of Gonzaga is significantly different. That that felt personal, right there. Tio. It did. It was personal. personal. It was a. It was. A, it was a. It was a wee bit personal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 